Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. John, last Friday, Westone Mines traded 23 million shares and peaked at $4.40. But this week, daily trading volume dropped below 1 million shares and the stock has retreated below $4. What happened last Friday? Last Friday was the, the last trading day before Westone was added to the S&P TSX uh, uh, Global Gold and uh, Global Mining Indices. Uh, it's sort of the opposite of what happened in mid-February when we saw a whole bunch of uh, resource stocks uh, abruptly sell off uh, in the last hour of a trading day. And that was a case where a gas company called Enbridge had been was going to be the next day added to a whole number of commodity indices. And so there are all these index tracking funds out there, private portfolios, uh, uh, actual uh, structured products, and the managers of these have to add or reduce companies based on the weighting of these formal indices that S&P publishes. And uh, what we had happen on Friday was all of a sudden a scramble to add West Dome to all these portfolios all all over the place. And of course, the traders got into the action and the stock was run as high as 440. And it was kind of like a one-day trading wonder, not related to any new developments, which is why the volumes have subsided this week. Uh, the company about three weeks ago reported its uh, results for last uh, last year's uh, gold production. Um, cash flow and revenues were both better. Uh, all in sustaining costs, however, were a little higher. Uh, the company has primarily benefited from uh, a stronger gold price price last year compared to 2015. Uh, but uh, the stock is now largely trading on the basis of the drilling being done at key, at the Kina complex, where the historical grade of four and a half grams has been eclipsed by deep drilling in the Kina, in the so-called Kina Deeps portion of the project. And of course, they on on the Eagle River project, which where they are currently producing 40, 50,000 ounces a year from known resources. Um, some drilling done earlier this year has demonstrated that there's also potentially thicker and better grade uh, uh, resources available in that deposit. So adding the West Dome mines, gold mines to the uh, to the index is a recognition of the progress the company has made turning around its uh, operations and putting in place uh, resource expansion strategies. During the past decade, Robert Friedland's Ivanhoe made a spectacular grassroots copper discovery called Kamoa in the Congo. Last fall, Ivanhoe announced an even higher grade copper discovery at Kamoa called Kakula. This week, Ivanhoe announced that a five kilometer step out hole west of Kakula intersected copper mineralization similar to Kakula. How big can Kamoa Kakula get? Jim, this is just an unbelievable, incredible discovery. And the odd thing is, it's only about five kilometers west of the Kalawizi uh, uh, complex that has been around forever in the, in the Congo. Uh, if you go to my uh, website and click on the company profile and scroll down to where the Kamoa project is, you can see a Google Earth uh, map embedded in the page. And if you scan in there and uh, uh, you know scroll scroll your mouse uh, mouse wheel, uh, you can actually show the incredible tailings, ponds, and pits and that associated with Kalawizi. And just to the west in this flat area, you can see all the drill pads from the Kamoa project. Now, the Kamoa project itself is already a billion tons of about 2.5% copper. Then Kakula was discovered to the west and, and it reported in uh, in September last year, and they had incredible grades of 7% or so, and that has a resource of about 300 million tons, uh, between 3 3.5%. And this new hole is 5 kilometers west of the Kakula deposit, and they reported 16 meters of similar calcocyte-rich uh, uh, mineralization. And uh, it's clearly in a context of where, where, where this style of deposit, if you get something like that, there's substantially more to be found. So 
this is just incredible that through sort of grassroots exploration and, and geological uh, uh, sleuthing that one can end up finding something literally uh, just uh, almost a, a stone's throw from an existing major operation. How big this will get, it's, it's just uh, unbelievable, probably billions, two to three billion tons of high-grade copper. By the way, John's uh, website is kaiserresearch.com. Discovery Watch with John Kaiser will be back right after the break. I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent-pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest-cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com, or phone us at 604-924-5504. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. John, last week you introduced Mineral Mountain with its Rockford project in South Dakota as an iron formation-style gold exploration play worth watching. I understand that you've now turned Mineral Mountain into a bottom fish recommendation. In your disclosures for each Discovery Watch session, you mentioned whether or not a company is a bottom fish or spec value hunter definition. What's the difference? A bottom fish is what I used to do uh, in the earlier days of my career as a newsletter writer where I would look for these cheap, obscure stocks, usually missing some sort of important piece, which is why they would be sitting sitting on the bottom, uh, waiting for the other pieces to fall into place. And that strategy didn't work very well when we got into a bull market cycle because then all these bottom fish would do really, really well. And then people would flock to my newsletter and subscribe and say, give us more bottom fish. Well, in the top of a bull cycle or in the middle of one, there aren't a lot of bottom fish left. So I developed a new approach called a spec value hunter recommendations where they did not have to have a flat lying bottom type uh, pattern uh, where the stock was of value either in absolute terms when I do my uh, you know, number crunching and, and see what this project uh, should be worth and compare to how the market is, or if it is relatively undervalued compared to other stocks. And in bull markets, we get this uh, situation where, you know, everything is fundamentally overpriced, but because you never know how far a bull market will run, uh, you can't just stop playing just because uh, in absolute fundamental terms, your stock is um, is uh, is overpriced. So my spec value hunter recommendations now are for uh, companies where I'm very comfortable that all the pieces are in place, that it's just a matter of time before the market recognizes the value, or in case where it is more of a discovery type play, I see that there is good relative value compared to the potential outcome. And I have sort of two pricing models, uh, $250 uh, gets you 90 days of access to everything, including the bottom fish recommendations, uh, plus uh, uh, the rest of the year, 270 days of access to the Spec Value Hunter picks. And the $800 a year package gives you access to the entire search engine and the uh, bottom fish recommendations. And I make it more expensive for the bottom fish recommendations because you need to be a sophisticated investor to understand that there are some key missing pieces. Now, in the case of Mineral Mountain and its uh, Rochford project, uh, the big missing piece is the company needs to raise another $4 million. They just reported uh, yesterday that they had closed a million dollar financing that they had done at 27 and a half cents. Uh, uh, they still need to raise another $4 million or so to do a proper exploration program on the whole sort of geological context that Boris Brostowski has put together. And and so at this point, I like the story very much. I've done a very lengthy write-up to explain it uh, as to what uh, this whole iron formation uh, uh, system, how it works, what they uh, need to intersect in order to know they finally have a, have a, have a winner on, on the line. 
and and uh, and if the company were to get a financing on good terms, say as we discussed last week, at a premium to the market, perhaps a, a producer coming in and and taking a strategic uh, equity stakehold in the company, then this is the kind of company that I would convert into a spec value hunter recommendation. Provided, of course, that the stock doesn't instantly uh, double or triple, which which we're not yet in the type of bull market where that would happen. So, yes, Mineral Mountain is now a, a bottom fish recommendation in the uh, twenty twenty nine cent uh, range, and uh, it is a candidate to become a spec value hunter recommendation if and when they raise the other four million dollars they need to uh, launch a proper exploration program on the Rochefort project. We'll have more Discovery Watch with John Kaiser right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. John, have any other iron formation prospects caught your attention? Well, interestingly, when I was at PDAC, I bumped into a uh, Rick Mazer, uh, whose Alto Ventures is one of my bottom fish recommendations, primarily because they own the Destiny Gold Project in Ontario, which has a sort of smallish 100,000 ounce high grade component, which they've also respun as a sort of bulk tonnage, uh, 600,000 one gram per ton type of scenario. And so I've treated it as, well, this is an optionality play if and when gold ever takes off. Uh, the Destiny project, uh, uh, will, 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 will come to life and everybody will want to, uh, fund further feasibility demonstration work on it and perhaps expand it. But Rick said, no, no, Destiny is not my, our, our current flagship project. Uh, we are, we are looking at I think rethinking the high grade potential in light of uh, all the excitement about high grade, high making new high grade discoveries within the, these older older districts and so on. But our new focus is the Oxford Lake project in Manitoba, which we picked up in about 2005, 2006, and have done a little bit of work on. But now we think it's the time to go back in there and see if we have another muscle white project on our hands. And Muscle White is, uh, is an excellent uh, uh, um, uh, uh, banded iron formation style deposit uh, that's in the Archean terrain of, uh, of Ontario. It's about 35 million tons of uh, about 6 gram per ton gold. And, uh, and, and Gold Corp operates it and there's uh, still uh, you know, maybe 10 million tons of uh, life left in that mine. And the idea at the Oxford Lake is to demonstrate that the smallish uh, zone that uh, Noranda uh, discovered in the in, 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 in the late 80s uh, uh, is perhaps part of something much bigger. Now, Noranda looked at this project area in the in in, in the 80s uh, uh, because. Uh, it was known that there were gold showings here and there and VMS uh, showings here and there. Uh, Oxford House is actually a Hudson's Bay trading post on the way to, uh, to Hudson's Bay. Uh, and trappers would come there to, uh, you know, sell their, sell their furs and, and so on. And, and so there was a lot of, um, you know, as people would travel through the area, they would see this little showing here or there. But this area of, uh, northern Manitoba has never yielded any Major base metal or gold deposits, and uh, in in the 80s, Noranda went into this area because there was a known high-grade copper showing. Flew a geophysical survey, looked for the uh, EM conductor zones, 
in the hope that there would be a um, you know copper zinc gold silver type uh, VMS deposit uh, uh, did not really find anything but uh, observed this big mag anomaly that turned out to be a banded iron formation and uh, did find the rusty the, the rusty zone where they came up with about 154,000 ounces of six grams per gold. Uh, it was right uh, slightly offshore a lake. Uh, uh, they tried to explore further in the western part of the uh, 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 iron formation anomaly, uh, but uh, there was extensive bush there, and then there was a forest fire warning that one year. So they never really ended up doing much work in the uh, sort of 7 to 10 kilometers west of the rusty zone. And uh, they did discover another uh, showing called uh, the Blue Jay, uh, just a bit to the east. Uh, but uh, when uh, Alto Ventures took it over, they you know drilled some holes here and there, but they never really looked at this area to the west where they would now like to go back into. Uh, they believe that uh, based on mapping and so on, that the, the iron formation has been cut by various deformation zones. They know there is the fluid flow in this area that brought gold mineralization in. That's what the rusty, uh, the rusty zone itself is evidence for. And uh, they plan to spend the, probably about a quarter million dollars this summer to go there and properly map the western limb of this uh, iron formation and uh, set the stage for a proper drill program uh, in the winter of, uh, you know, end of this year, 2017, early early 2018. And in my view, this is a good strategy because uh, we're not yet into a market where there is super strong interest in uh, so, so, sort of grassroots type exploration. But I believe that by the end of this year, uh, we will be in a much stronger market. Retail investors will have started to arrive, and they'll be able to raise the capital to mount a proper drill program on this uh, Oxford Lake project. Now, it's possible that their mapping shows that really this is not that prospective, and they may decide not to do it. You do have to do this uh, targeting work ahead of a drill program. Uh, they do have the... Uh, a a Kudia project uh, in the Windfall District. Uh, they've drilled probably a dozen holes into that and didn't really hit anything interesting. But it's smack in the middle of the Osisco, uh, Osisco's Windfall project, where Osisco's got a 400,000 meter drill program underway. At some point, I suspect uh, that project will be absorbed by Osisco just to consolidate that area. Um, but the the, the sort of plan B for the company is the Destiny project with its uh, bulk tonnage potential and its possibility that it could be revisited from a high-grade perspective. So I have this as a bottom fish recommendation because none of these pieces are really, uh, you know, strong enough to, uh, you know, justify the stock uh, taking off and trading at a higher price than it is currently right now. But all these components that they have got going they all add up to making this uh, an attractive uh, bottom fish in this price below 10 cents. There's only 25, 30 million shares fully diluted. And it is a group that's uh, technically competent. Uh, Rick Mazur, Mike Cozio, um, ex Camaco. In fact, he was involved with uh, the, uh, the Destiny project back in the early days. So the Oxford Lake project, not going to deliver a discovery hole this year, but setting the stage for a potential banded iron formation style discovery uh, uh, early next year. John, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been talking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. Discovery Watch will be back next week. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.